To take a bit of Dickensian influence, the Trinity is a mystery to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. As a child, I never had an issue with this mystery. God is Father, God Son, God Spirit, three in one. If I spoke of God or Jesus or Spirit, my mind would seamlessly move through them and combine them all together at once. This was in the hymns that we sang, Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And I was baptized in the singular name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It wasn't until I got to seminary that this great mystery got messy. I was presented with 2,000 years of Trinitarian theology, study and theory of the Trinity. Even a rather humorous cartoon put out by Lutheran satire, it's called St. Patrick's Bad Analogies. And in this video, St. Patrick, or an icon of St. Patrick, attempts to simply explain the Trinity to two ancient Irishmen, who in their turn school Patrick on the various historic Trinitarian heresies. All that simply became convoluted in my head, and I accepted that I knew nothing. After all, admitting that you know nothing is how you get a degree in divinity, isn't it? <laughs> that was until one day when I heard this theory that spoke to my very soul. An ancient theory used by the early mothers and fathers of the church. They described the relationship of the Trinity as God in motion, God in rotation, God in dance. Now, the Greek for this is perichoresis, that is, para, around, and chorea, to move as one. It's where we get our English words chorus and choreography. Now, as a singer and a dancer, this spoke to me. It says that God is in a perpetual dance, moving through space, time, creation, and eternity. This made sense to me, a dancing God. Human beings, even before we can talk or walk, we dance. Babies wiggle. And I'm pretty sure that most of our modern dance moves are influenced by somebody's happy toddler. Toddlers who will stand in the middle of a crowded room and dance as if nobody's watching. We dance alone. We dance together. And I imagined the three persons of the Trinity with arms linked like schoolchildren on a playground, where they stand in a circle and begin spinning faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Their movement becomes synced. And to the outsider, they are a blur, mysterious, one singular motion, one movement, one being. They are one. Now I imagine the dance of creation, swirling lights and atoms, winds and waters. I imagined God dancing in the freshness of the primordial garden and in that rotation, kicking up the dust of the infant earth. The Spirit of God breathing life into it. The Word of God calling it into being. And the Adam, the Adam, coming forth. If humanity truly lives as one, working for each other in love and promoting the well-being of all of creation, we dance the dance of life together. We are imitations of God. Let us make man in our image, as we read in Genesis today. In community, we mirror God, the Trinity, to ourselves and to the world. The dance of creation is a dance of love, and we are invited to join. 
In San Francisco, California, St. Gregory of Nyssa Episcopal Church has fully incorporated this idea into their worship and their architecture. When you enter the space, you come into an eight-sided room with high ceilings and an open floor plan. In the center is the table. And for every Eucharist, the priest and the deacons lead a procession round that altar. A spiraling stream of human beings, old, young, rich, poor, new Christians and seasoned saints, all become equal in this moment. They begin to sing and to beat the drums. They crash the cymbals and begin to dance. Three steps forward, one step back. Three steps forward, one step back. The serpentine motion begins to spiral and moves toward the center, toward the altar, toward the Eucharist. They move as one. Now high above them is a ring of icons in fresco. They are the saints of every generation, all being led by Christ in the same dance. In the dance of life, we become one in community. We become one with the communion of saints, and we join God as Trinity in an act of creation. From that same space, from that same table, they host their outreach programs, concerts for the community, and a weekly food pantry for those beyond the walls as they invite them to join in the dance as well. Sometimes we require a breather from the dancing, some time to step aside, take some rest, and that is okay. But all that time we are being fed by those still in the dance. And we are always welcome to join the stream again. The dancing never stops because God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is eternal. Our life in this world is part of the dance. Our life of faith is part of the dance. Every twist and turn, every sigh and song, every tiny step and every soaring leap is part of this dance. Every act of charity, every loving word, every silent prayer, every frustration, every passion, every joy and every pain are part of this dance. And though we may be at different points on the floor, we are always welcome to join the community. Yet this all still remains part of a great mystery. One of my favorite animated features was, came out about 20 years ago is The Prince of Egypt. In one particular scene, Moses, soon to be father-in-law, Jethro, is teaching Moses that each individual, with all our faults and insecurities, are part of the grand design because we belong to God. There is a great line, though, that I think speaks directly to this journey. It says, life can escape and be blown about by the winds of change and chance. And though you'll never know all the steps, you must learn to join the dance. What we do here today, our prayers, our community, our love for each other, this is the dance. It is just a few steps that become part of creation's story and joins God in the eternal dance. So will you come with me? Shall we dance? 
In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 